Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are beginning the Toppling Tuplet series. Uh, now, FYI, if you're looking for information about how to enter tuplets in either simple or speedy entry, I did cover that in some of the videos in the simple and speedy entry categories, so go have a look at those videos. I believe it's 8-1 and 9-1 and 9-3. And uh, I'll see if I, if I can add some jump links in the Toppling Tuplets uh, page of the website to actually take you directly to the portions of those videos that covers tuplets. All right, but for today, we're going to be looking at the tuplet tool and exactly what you can do with that. Um, and we'll, we'll go from there. So the tuplet tool in the main tool palette is the thing that looks like a little triplet uh, eighth note thing here. And when we click that, we get a crosshairs. And if we get close to a note, we'll get a little note icon telling us that we are now in a good position to uh, create a tuplet there. And as I, as I mentioned, you can put uh, tuplets in with simple or speedy entry. And actually, 99% of the time, it's going to be better to do that. And as you see as I'm going here, you, you'll understand why. But we can actually add tuplets with the tuplet tool itself. And all we have to do is just if we have some notes in here, in this case, I've got three quarter notes. And I'm going to make this a quarter note triplet. Just uh, click on the first note or somewhere close to it, and you'll get the tuplet definition dialog box. And the top portion of this is going to define the tuplet. In this case, it says three quarters in the space of two quarters. And the default setup for this is that Finale is going to assume you want a triplet based on the uh, rhythmic value that you just clicked. So I clicked on a quarter note, so it's assuming I want three quarters in the space of two quarters. That's just how that works. And that's what I want anyway, so it's all set up. So I just press OK and it will create a quarter note triplet for me. Now, one of the disadvantages of using the tuplet tool to create triplets is that it will not fill out the rest of the bar with rests like it will in simple or speedy entry. So this is an, a good reason to not use the tuplet tool for this particular uh, use. Um, so uh, once you do something like this, you'll have to go back to simple or speedy and actually enter the rest of that bar, all right? Uh, we could do the same thing on the left hand here. If I click this eighth note, like I said, it's going to assume the triplet based on the on the rhythmic value that you click. So I clicked an eighth note, so I'm getting three eighths in the space of two eighths, which is what I want. Okay. Do it on the second one as well. Click. Okay. And we get two eighth note triplets. And again, we're left with some space that we'll have to deal with later. Now, if we don't want a triplet, if we want a different type of tuplet, we can do that as well. So in the second bar, let's say here I want five sixteenths uh, in the space of four. We click on that first note. And again, it's assuming I want 3 sixteenths in the space of 2, but I, I, I want 5 sixteenths, right? So we'll put just change that to 5, change that to 4, 5 in the space of 4. Click OK. And we've got a 5 tuplet and a mess of a rest situation that you'll definitely have to go back and fix in speedy or simple entry. Another disadvantage of using this, but it can be done, is that um, triplets at the end of a bar, like in this right hand here, what I want is a quarter note triplet uh, starting on beat 3. But obviously, you can't enter you know, five quarter notes worth of value in a 4-4 measure. So you, you're kind of stuck with just entering the first two of the triplet. And then from here, you can click the first note to create the three quarters in the space of two quarters tuplet, right? And it'll create a triplet for you, but it'll kind of look wrong because there's a note missing. Um, again, you'll have to go back to one of your other tools and enter the, that third note in that case. So again, it's not the most efficient way to do it, but it is a possible way to do it. And then finally, what if you want a uh, tuplet that's not based on that first value? Like in this left hand here, what I want is a quarter note triplet that starts with two eighth notes, right? So what we would do is click on that eighth note. And again, it's assuming I want a triplet based on eighth notes in the tuplet definition, right? But actually what I want is a is three quarter notes, we can just change the, the rhythmic value in the pull down menus here. So three quarter notes in the space of two quarter notes. And what this is doing is essentially forcing Finale to create this type of tuplet instead of the tuplet uh, based on the rhythmic value that I clicked on, right? And click OK, and it will create that tuplet for me. So now I've got a quarter note triplet starting with two eighth notes. And this will become important and critical when you're uh, doing things with like swing rhythms, right? Because uh, let's say in this measure here, what I want is uh, two beats of, s of swing rhythm, right? And again, if I click on the quarter note, it's going to assume I want a quarter note triplet, which is not correct. I want an, actually want an eighth note tripl triplet, right? Just happens to start with a quarter note. So again, redefine the, uh, the values here as eighth notes. So we're putting three eighths in the space of two, and despite the fact that the first one's a quarter note, it's going to create an eighth note triplet like that. All right, and do the same thing with the second one, eighths instead of quarters. 
and we've got our swing rhythms. And of course, we've got extra notes to uh, that we're going to have to add later. All right. So again, it is possible to create uh, tuplets with the tuplet tool. Uh, again, it's not the most efficient way to do it. Again, speedy or simple entry is going to be a much faster and more sensical way of doing that. But it is available there for you to do. Uh, now, the main thing I wanted to show you in this video is, is how to manipulate your tuplets because this is actually going to be uh, fairly important as you um, as you as you go with your uh, entering music and dealing with tuplets. And there's a few different uh, things that I think is important to know. The first is the position, and by position I mean, or the placement. And the, by placement I mean like whether it's above or below. And the default placement of a tuplet is going to be uh, stem slash beam side, which means that Finale is going to put the tuplet um, where the stems or the beams are going. So as you can see, in this second tuplet, all these uh, stems are facing up, and the, the tuplet is up. Now, if you have mixed stems like I do in the first one, it's going to uh, place the tuplet based on the majority of where the stems are. In this case, I have two stems going up and one stem going down, so the tuplet goes up, right? If you happen to have a situation like I have with these uh, sex tuplets over here, where there's an even number of up and down stems, um, Finale will consider the first note um, and put the put the tuplet in that direction. So in the, in the first bar here, you see the first note, the stem is going down, so it's putting its stem side, in other words, down. In the second bar, even though there's an equal number, the stem is going up, so the tuplet goes above, right? Same thing with these uh, uh, sextuplet eighth notes here, right? The beams, uh, you know, the beam is upwards in the second one and downwards in this first one, so that's the direction that the, that the, uh, the tuplet's going, all right? So that's, like I said, the, the default uh, situation is stem slash beam side for triplets, but or tuplets, but we can um, change that, and there's a few options. Now, if we go into the tuplet tool and click the first note of any tuplet, we will get a, a, a few handles here. And there's a big handle, a big square handle, and that's what I'm going to uh, deal with first, and I'll show the other ones in a little bit. Um, when you click that square handle, you can actually right-click it to pull up a contextual menu, and we have a few options. And the ones I'm concerned about right now are placement, and uh, we can also find that if we double click that handle, the normal double click, we'll get that tuplet, tuplet definition box again. And it's this section in the upper left where it says placement. And there's a pull down menu with five options. This is what I'm going to talk about right now. So stem beam side, like I said, is going to be the default situation for our tuplets. But we have manual and there's also note side above and below. Um, now manual uh, I wouldn't recommend using this. Manual will start out with your tuplets on top, no matter where they are. Um, and uh, there's some weird things that happen with manual. Sometimes it's useful to have manual set, but the majority of the time, you know, you're going to want to use probably stem, beam, or something else, right? Uh, so again, stem, beam side, we can change it to note side. And the same thing will happen. Let's change this one to note side too. Again, we can do it with a contextual menu, placement, note sign. And again, it will it will place the, the tuplet on the note side. And again, if there's a, a mixed situation, it will place it on the majority. So the majority of the, the notes are are on the bottom, so it places the tuplet on the bottom, just in the same way as if it were stem beam side, right? Uh, and then there's two other options. Um, no, so if stem beam note above, if we select above, the tuplet's going to go above. And if we select below, Obviously, the placement will be below, even though that one already is below. Now, there's some difference between uh, uh, stem beam side and note side versus uh, um, above and below. And let me just kind of illustrate that. So currently, well, actually, let's see. I've got this one, the first one set to stem side. Let's set the second one to note side. All right. So stem side, note side. <coughs> and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start moving these notes around so that the tup so you'll see what happened to the tuplet brackets. Um, oops. So if we go up a step, right, we'll see that the the stems in the first uh, tuplet get all pushed down, so the tuplet switches to down because that first tuplet is set to stem side, right? So basically, what's happening is that the uh, the tuplet is flipping. And as I go up further, remember that second tuplet is set to note side. And as the the, uh, the stems flip, the tuplet will flip to the other side, right? So with stem side and note side placements, the uh, the tuplets will flip uh, accordingly as such, all right? Now, if I were to go and set these to, let's set this one to above, set this one to 
below. Now the, the difference here is that no matter what happens, that first tuplet will always be above because it's set to above, and that second tuplet will always be below because it's set to below, right? It doesn't matter which way the stems or the notes are, are going. You know, it's, it's basically frozen above and frozen below. That's the situation with those tuplets, right? Let's just reset those back to stem beam, back to stem beam, all right? Um, and another thing, uh, another interesting thing you can do um, is we can actually use the F key to flip the, tr the uh, tuplet. So if for whatever reason we wanted this tuplet to go above in this situation, just press the F and it will flip to above. Press the F again, it will flip to below. Same thing here and below. Now the interesting thing to know about this is that currently this tuplet I have selected here is set to stem beam side, right? If I press F, it will set it to uh, note side. If I press F again, it goes back to stem beam side, right? So F will only basically toggle between stem beam and note side. However, if you were to select above, right? So now this tuplet's set to above and press F, it will toggle between above and below, right? So there's actually sort of two different categories of flipping ability here. There's stem, beam side, and note side. So if you press F with either one of these, it will toggle between these two and above and note. If you have above selected, F will toggle between above and below, all right? Just sort of an interesting thing to know about that, all right? The other thing which I think is important to know about these tuplets is how to manipulate the brackets. And uh, so I wanted to do that in this first video because I think it is important and I'll, I'll tell you why in a, in a couple minutes. Now, when you click on a note to get this, uh, these handles, what you have here is a main square handle. And this square handle will actually allow you to just move the entire tuplet up and down. Now, what you can't do is you cannot move it left and right. Now, this is because there's a setting for tuplets uh, the default setting is that you are not allowed to uh, drag horizontally. We can actually um, undo that so that we could drag horizontally, but I think more often than not, it's better to uh, suppress the the tuplet from going left or right because it will, um, you know, it will it will keep the tuplet lined up appropriately. All right. <coughs> Let me just zoom in here a little bit. Now. Um, Aside from the main square handle, there are five other smaller diamond rectangles that are on this um, uh, on this bracket. And they're a little bit hard to see, but uh, they're there. The, the first one is right above the square handle, and this this one will actually just move the the, the number in relation to the bracket. Okay, and there's a diamond handle on the end of each hook here, and it doesn't matter which one you use that will drag up and down, it will extend or decrease the length of that hook, right? So you can extend it to a, a really large hook or decrease it. And you actually flip it on the other side or for whatever re reason you would need to do something like that. And one thing you'll notice is that the, the hooks will move together, the left and right hook, and it doesn't matter which hook you drag, they will both move together. And this is another setting in the default tuplet definition where the hooks are set to match length. We can override that so that they're not set, and then when it's overridden, the, the hooks um, can be set to different lengths if you need to. And I will show you that in another video at some point. <coughs> but for now, just be aware that they will match length, which is handy. And then there's two more small diamond handles uh, just inside the hooks on the left and right. And both of those handles will do different things. The one on the left here uh, will actually move the entire bracket up and down um, and the number will remain the same and the bracket will move, right? And again, with all of these uh, handles, you can never move left and right, right? It's just up and down that we're dealing with, all right? And then the, uh, the second handle on the inside of the right hook will actually change the slope and you can move it up and down and sort of, you know, you can see how it kind of seesaws around the number there, all right? All right so that's what those, uh, those five handles will do. And incidentally, you will only have those five handles if you're uh, selecting a triplet that has a bracket like this one does. If I were to go over here and select this triplet, which doesn't have a bracket, uh, you can see that I only have one handle. I don't have those other handles. And obviously, that's, there's, you know, there's no reason to have those other handles without the bracket there, right? So that's how that works. Um, th the main reason I wanted to show you this in this video is that you know, the one thing about tuplets and finale is that they are pretty dumb. 
they will not move out of the way of anything. In fact, if I put a slur here on this situation of notes here, you'll see that the, uh, the tuplet is overlapping the slur and there's, you know, you're gonna have to move the tuplet. So use those uh, handles that I show you. You can move it up a little bit and then maybe we can change the angle a little bit. Maybe it's gotta go up a little more, right? Um, so again, it's, you're, you're gonna, if you're dealing with a lot of tuplets, you're gonna run into this all the time where you're gonna be conflicting with uh, articulations, with slurs, with uh, expressions. Uh, so you're going to have to be able to know how to do all, all that stuff, all right? And then finally, the um, last thing I'm going to show you is that if you end up making some adjustments to your tuplets and, you know, you've got them all over the place and whatever happened, um, there is a way to reset it back to the default. Actually, there's a couple ways. And the first is to just select that, uh, that handle, actually, and then uh, right-click it, and you'll get this contextual menu again, and there's an option here for Reset and you hit reset and it will reset it back to the default. You can undo that and we can actually get to that same contextual menu from the um, uh, selection tool. Just click on it and reset. And then finally, if we're in the tuplet tool and we have that uh, main handle selected, if you have a number pad, you can hit the clear key. Oops, I should actually do that when there's something to reset. Hit the clear key and it will also reset it. And uh, just so you know, what it's resetting to is the basically the, the default uh, tuplet definition as defined by what's in the document options, by the way. All right. All right. So uh, I, hopefully this helps. Uh, I gave you a lot of information about what you can do with your tuplets with the tuplet tool. And uh, I'll, I'll do some more videos on tuplets coming up and uh, teach you some other things that you can do with that. So uh, thanks for watching and come back soon.